Metals and non-metals both combine with oxygen to form their respective oxides. Now, let us see what happens if we burn magnesium which is a metal and sulphur which is a non-metal. They react with the oxygen in the air to form their oxides. Let us check these two oxides with litmus paper. We know that red litmus paper turns blue in alkali or base and blue litmus paper turns red in acid. Let us check by putting these in the two oxides formed in our experiment. Check both the oxides with litmus paper. Let us see what happens if we burn magnesium which is a metal. 2 Mg plus O2 gives 2 MgO that is magnesium oxide. Blue litmus remained blue. Red litmus paper turned blue in magnesium oxide. Hence, we can conclude that metal oxides are basic in nature. If we burn sulphur, it combines with oxygen forming sulphur dioxide. Blue litmus turns red in sulphur dioxide which means non-metal oxides are acidic in nature. Sulphur plus O2 gives sulphur dioxide. Now, let us check what happens if we add acid to this oxide. Let us now add concentrated hydrochloric acid to the magnesium oxide and see what happens. Let us again check what the resultant is. Magnesium oxide plus hydrochloric acid gives magnesium chloride plus water. This is a solution of salt and water. Let us revise what we learnt just now. From the experiments we just now saw, we have understood various chemical properties of metals and non-metals and the reactions that take place when these metals and non-metals come in contact with various gases, acids and water. Reaction of metals and non-metals. Metal plus oxygen gives metal oxide basic in nature. Non-metal plus oxygen gives non-metal oxide acidic in nature. Metal oxide plus acid gives salt plus water. Non-metal oxide plus base gives soluble salt and water. Metal plus dilute acid gives salt and hydrogen gas. Non-metals do not react with dilute acids. Most metals do not react with cold water. Exception, sodium and potassium react with cold water to produce their hydroxides and hydrogen gas whereas magnesium requires steam to give similar reactions. Non-metal oxides plus water gives acid. Students, what do you see in the picture? That's right, it's an iron scrap, copper plate and silver vessel. We learned in the earlier video while discussing the physical properties of metals that metals are generally hard and lustrous. Then why can't we see the luster on this copper plate and silver vessel? Also, what has happened to this iron plate? We know it is very difficult to change the shape of iron by hammering, but here we can see it is almost torn and red. Why does it happen? Think about it. Gases in the air react with metals in presence of moisture to form metal compounds. The metals get affected by this process and undergo corrosion. The various colored deposits that we see on the metals are due to this process. Now find out which gases are responsible for the corrosion we see in the picture. It is essential to protect metallic objects or substances from corrosion which causes irreversible damage as we saw in case of iron. To achieve this, various methods are used. Plating with another non-corroding metal is one such effective method which is widely used. What will happen if the plating goes off from a metallic object? Students, what do you think about these statues? What happens to them over years being exposed to air, wind or rains? Why do they not change their color or do not corrode? Is it possible to apply plating to them to maintain them as they are? No. Have you ever wondered how these utensils get easily cleaned and always shine for years? Well, 
there is another method used in making these statues or utensils. A homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or a homogeneous mixture of a metal with non-metal which is called alloy is used to make this. The alloy thus made as per the requirement has all the essential properties suitable for the application of the object made out of it. Alloys of copper Cu. Alloy composition typical uses brass copper 65 to 90 percent zinc 10 to 35 percent door locks and bolts brass musical instruments central heating pipes bronze copper 78 to 95 percent tin 5 to 22 percent plus manganese phosphorus aluminium or silicon decorative statues Musical instruments Duralumin Aluminium 94% Copper 4.5 to 5% Magnesium 0.5 to 1.5% Manganese 0.5 to 1.5% Automobile and aircraft body parts Military equipment Alloys of iron Fe Cast iron Iron 96 to 98% Carbon 2 to 4 percent plus silicon. Metal structures such as bridges and heavy duty cookware. Steel, stainless. Iron, 50 percent or more than that. Chromium, 10 to 30 percent plus smaller amounts of carbon, nickel, manganese, molybdenum, and other metals. Jewelry, medical tools, tableware. Summary Students, in this video, we discussed about chemical properties of metals and non-metals. We also learned about the reactions of metals and non-metals with oxygen, water, acids and bases. From these properties, we understood the various effects of gases and moisture on metals how metal compounds are formed due to reaction of gases with metals in the presence of moisture and the methods used to prevent this process called as corrosion. We also discussed about alloys and their uses. Challenge Find out various processes to stop corrosion.